Self-discipline is everything. If you don't have it, I, I don't look at you right because I know you're capable of more. It's not discipline so much for me. It's all on you. It's all on you. The self part is what's big. Where you're going to fail and you're going to be in your head. You're going to be saying, I'm not good enough. And it's how you get through that. It's how you get through that on a daily basis when that thing is saying, man, I'm 43. I've done so much. You start to become civilized. The refrigerator gets full. You start get, making money and you start, I'm not getting cold anymore. I'm retired. Once in at 40 people shouldn't be playing basketball or football or, or, or being in you start to believe this shit and it becomes in your fucking mind like there's people who are retiring you know at 40 something years old or, or 30 something years old at 43 i'm still putting 100 mile weeks still doing thousands of pull-ups thousands of push-ups because i'm not allowing myself to become civilized the worst thing that can happen to a man is become civilized you lose that fucking fight you you you, you lose that why the fuck am i doing this shit I'm good. You ain't good, man. You ain't never fucking arrived. And that's just my mentality. You may have more, but you never fucking arrived. You want to be uncommon amongst uncommon people. Period. We have two voices in our mind. And boy, I know they're fucking true. I've heard them. I hear them now. <laughs> and they're real. It's that one voice. That voice I used to love to fucking hear, we love to hear, is that soft motherfucker. That soft motherfucker voice that says, sleep the fuck in. It's okay. It's that coddling voice. You wanna be hugged and nurtured and all that shit that says, it's gonna be okay. Well, there's another motherfucking voice that wakes you up in the middle of the night. It's that demon fucking voice that whispers in your fucking ear that says, get up, motherfucker. You're not fucking good enough. You gotta work fucking harder. You haven't put enough time in. It's that voice you wanna run away from. It's that voice you don't wanna fucking hear. But guess what? It's that voice you need to fucking listen to. Every foot strike to hit the pavement. That's how I feed myself. Motherfuckers look for inspiration. Inspiration's found. And every first step you take, every grasp of that fucking iron bar. All that shit, all the miles were pulled. Inspiration's found in suffering. In life, a lot of us believe that we're working much harder than we actually are. We think if we fucking got up early for four days, we learned something. You gotta drop your entitled mindset. It's dead weight. We believe you work harder than we actually have. Trust me, most of us have it. The one thing in life you gotta realize is this. Learn to help yourself. Don't count on other people to help you. We're all being tested in life. And guess what? This is one test you can't cheat on. We all have our own test. Some of us are obese. Some of us are depressed. Some of us are insecure. And the only way to overcome it is for you and you alone to face it. You have to do your best work when you're at least motivated. So those days you don't want to do it, guess what you got to do? You got to suck it the fuck up and do it. Stay hard. When you get to the point where you really don't care, you become very, very dangerous. I'm not saying you don't care like, I don't care if I do that. No, when you don't care about other people and how they view you, about how you walk, how you talk, how you dress, where you want to go with your life. Most of us fail in life because we're afraid of what everyone around you is thinking. That's 100% true. We live by the narrative of other people. One thing about life is that people in life, they're the ultimate puppet masters. They exploit your weakness and they love to walk you around life and own space in your head. One of the biggest ways to cut those strings and walk on your own two fucking feet to your own destination in life is to build self-respect, self-esteem, 
self-discipline, all those things. Stay hard is not just about going to the fucking gym. Stay hard is about going that extra step when you fucking can. That's what builds self-esteem and self-respect. Stay hard. I had to stop giving a fuck about people. That was the biggest thing. I had to stop caring what people thought about me. I realized that everybody's fucked up. That's the one thing I realized. I walked around and I put these people on a, on a fucking pedestal. Everybody was better than me. So I can't tell you anything about me because you're going to judge me and I'm going to feel even worse than what I am. What I realized, once I calmed my mind down, I sat back and looked at how jacked up this world is. Once you realize that you are not alone, everybody that's talking to you about how jacked up you are, only thing they've done better than you is they've hidden their fucked up world better than you have. Fuck people! One thing you have to learn early in life, I didn't learn this till later on. I don't give a motherfucker. You can't care what anybody thinks about you. If I care what people thought about me, you think I'd be yelling out here, doing a hundred and five pound rock, talking shit? This is who I am. Find out who you are, and own that motherfucker, and tell people to go fuck themselves. Don't ever worry about anybody and what the fuck they think about you. You do that, I guarantee you, your life will be in shambles. You will become the biggest bitch of all time. The most important step we'll ever take in life is our next one. A lot of us get our feet stuck in concrete. We get our feet stuck in concrete because we're afraid to make enemies. We're afraid to speak what's on our mind. We're afraid of being in that group of people. And when you walk away, we're afraid of what they might say behind your back. All that fear clouds your brain, clouds your thinking. One thing in life, people don't always have haters. Embrace them. If you can walk on fucking water, trust me, the haters will say, you can walk on water because you can't fucking swim. Learn one thing. Shut the fucking noise out. Embrace the fact that people don't like you. You need to do something right. Stay hard. Stay in the fight. One thing I found out in my life, I used to always want people to accept me and like me. So I became who they were. If you like something and I ain't like it, I liked it because you liked it. Become unapologetic of who the fuck you are in your life. If you get after it and you're a hard motherfucker, get after it. You gotta make yourself better than what you think you are. And what that requires is people to not fucking understand you, not know you, not get you at all. Look at you like you're off. Look at you like you have a problem. Don't worry about that shit. Be unapologetic. Get after it. Stay hard. Do who the fuck you are. A lot of folks never even start the journey, man. They never start the journey because they live in this fake life that who they want to be, they act like they are, but they're not because they haven't fixed all this stuff yet. You got to fix this first before we can start our journey in life. You fix these problems, now your journey can begin because you no longer care about how people are judging you. When, when you care more about how someone's judging you, you're gonna stay right there. There's no forward momentum. The more I get it quick, the more self-respect I gain. And the power was all mine. In life, it's important to do one thing. Many people, We'll try to dehumanize you. It's up to you to find self-respect and dignity in yourself. You don't need a uniform to have honor. You need to have pride in yourself. So if you want to sit back and judge how jacked up I was and how messed up my life was, Merry Christmas, go for it. Have a good time and say, judge it, man. Judge it. Like just me talking about it makes me feel good. 
And that's, and that's another thing about it. When you are willing to talk about how jacked up you are, the strength, that big rock that you carry, it just starts to come off. I'm tired of being afraid. I'm tired of not telling you shit. I'm tired of lying about how good I'm not. Anytime you move from being normal to trying to be exceptional, people aren't gonna like that shit. Those normal people, it makes them feel like shit, so they're gonna judge you. And nowadays, it's very easy to be a fucking coward. Why? We got Instagram and shit. Most folks don't tell you to your face. They go online, they post about like cowards. Don't let cowards get in your fucking head. And last thing, make sure you do you, stay hard. Bitch, you don't fucking know me. You see a one minute fucking video about me. You know how hard I train, how I live, the fucking dedication I put into my fucking life. So why do you troll? Maybe it's a fat motherfucker at home. Lazy. With no discipline or dedication. Maybe you're jealous. Who knows? With success in life comes more haters. Don't make them hurt your feelings. Use them for fuel. Use them for energy. In times of need, put them on the fucking mental Rolodex in your mind. And when you don't want to do shit, roll through your brain. Pull up that motherfucker that you need. That person who said you couldn't do something. Work fast enough, good enough, smart enough, whatever the fuck it may be. Use it for energy. Instead of killing them with kindness, torture them with fucking success. It comes from a disgusting place of not being fulfilled in your life, of afraid of dying, having never accomplished anything. When you have a real fear of dying and being just another person, that I live to pay the bills, I made a thousand dollars a month. This is my life, I spray for cockroaches, man. If, if that makes you feel good, that's great. It didn't make me feel good. I wanted to the first time in my life, after 26 years, it was 24, 25, wherever I was, I wanted to feel good about myself. I have to become someone in this world. I put everything on David Goggins to be a Navy SEAL. I put my whole life, a guy that was scared of the fucking water, a guy that could fucking talk stuff how to read and write, on being one of the hardest motherfuckers on the planet. Think about that shit. A guy that came from nothing. I put my whole life, and I'm gonna go out here and put everything on David fucking Goggins to be a Navy SEAL. Not to go be a fucking, you know, Boy Scout or some shit, a Navy SEAL. And I and I, I, I look at that and I did all this shit just to get the opportunity to succeed. That's what that's what people don't fucking understand, man. And people see the, the, the end result. I remember that guy saying, my God, man, I can't believe what the fuck I've just done. I put everything, ruin relationships, ruin this, ruin that, put everything on. In fact, I have to become someone in this world or I'm no good for anybody. I saw myself walking across the fucking stage at 191 fucking pounds. That's what I had to get to, to, to get into the door. I saw myself six months, a year later, whatever it's gonna take me to do it. I saw myself walking across that stage, getting that fucking certificate of graduation from Buds. And I was able to be there at 300 fucking pounds. And that feeling that I was nowhere near that fucking feeling. I was able to put myself there a million times every fucking day and that feeling of like my god that is going to feel fucking amazing that's what made me suffer that's what allowed the pain to be real and say this is worth it i want to feel for this fucking next 18 months it took me 18 fucking months to finally become a navy to finally you know just get through butts 18 months and six months it took me 18. that's what woke me up every fucking morning was I'm gonna put myself through this much fucking pain and suffering for a few seconds. That's all it is. A few seconds of joy. And it's so fucking worth it, man. That's what people don't get. So I'm able to put myself at the finish line, even though I have no finish line, but at the finish line of an event before I even start the motherfucker to say, 
how are you going to feel at the end of this? Visualizing is, is my biggest tool of life. That's why I, I, I've been able to put myself in cold water, put myself in a 100 mile race millions of times before I've done it. And I've been able to go through the race and see how I'm going to feel at mile 50. Almost to the, almost to the exact, exact feeling. No surprise, I've already done this a million times. And that's the one thing I practice and practice and practice and practice overnight. But also, the most important thing is I, I, I practice that feeling of accomplishment that I'm going to have when it's all said and done with. Someone asked me one time, what's your biggest fear? My biggest fear was fucking dying that 300 pound man. Never knowing I could be who I am today. A lot of us are wasteful, but we're wasteful who we are in life. It's important to drain that motherfucker and get all you can out of yourself. Stay hard. Mediocrity is everywhere right now. And we're all trying to find an easy way out and we're judging ourselves. We surround ourselves around people that make us feel great. They tell us what we want to hear. The second we put ourselves amongst the uncommon people, we don't like that feeling. We don't want that person who's constantly challenging our weaknesses. We want that person who's constantly, you know, making us feel nice and good and secure in ours. That's the mediocrity of life. We want to be the best amongst the average people. You're mediocre now, man. What are you fucking doing today, tomorrow, the next fucking day? The mind's a medieval motherfucker. It's constantly fighting against you. It's the only thing in the history of the fucking world that shows up on time every time. It has a tactical advantage over you. It knows your fears. It knows your insecurities. It knows everything about you. It might be the only thing in that world that knows all about you. You gotta know about it. It's gonna show up when you don't wanna show up. It's gonna show up at the worst time possible when you wanna be successful. It's gonna say, take the easy road. Take the easy way out. You gotta learn your brain like your brain has learned you. You gain knowledge through suffering. And on the other end of suffering is a world that very few, very few have ever seen. It's a beautiful world because that's where you find yourself. You don't find yourself in over here. You find yourself on the other end. The permanent result comes from you fucking, I say it all the time, you have to suffer. You have to make that a tattoo on your fucking brain so when that hard time comes again, you don't forget it. We often forget how hard we are, but you gotta reflect back. Take a couple seconds to reflect, I've, I've been through this, I've been through that. And then remind yourself, I'm a bad motherfucker. And then you can get through that shit, but if you don't believe it, you haven't endured shit, you're just blowing smoke, man. I'm constantly callousing over my victim's mentality that I once had growing up. Every day you have to do this shit. Because why? When you stop doing it, you don't just maintain it. If you stop shooting a gun, you're not going to be a great shot if you pick a gun up a year from now. The only way to keep from getting rusty is to constantly over that motherfucking machine. The machine exists. You got to keep challenging it every day. I stutter, I, I have these issues with, with, with uh, reading and writing and, and I'm, I'm, I'm fat and I'm insecure. You have to face that in that dark room. In that dark room is who you are. But in that dark room is where you have to create another human being that walks out of that dark room to face who you are. That's the only way you're gonna get over all those things. You have to create someone else. Not like you have two different personalities. It is you. But you have to find strength. And that visualization of almost me 
like almost like that Superman cape, like, like, like I'm coming out a different person, a person that doesn't give a fuck about anything, who doesn't care about being judged, who knows I'm weak, who knows I'm afraid, who says whatever you think about me, take it, whatever, I'm here. In the dark room, you face yourself, you realize you want to be better, you realize you don't want to be this weak, insecure person in the world who has all these problems that we all have. We all have. Social media is a great platform to tell you who we want to be, not who we are. Look at yourself, man. Look at yourself. What am I going to do today to change what I see in this mirror? If you're not real and raw with who the fuck you are, nothing's going to change. You face it every day. You face it every single day of your life. Where you say, okay, like if you're fat and you lose weight, it's patience. It's patience in this fact of accepting who you are right now. I'm fat. I don't like myself. You have to live in your own fucking world. You cannot judge yourself. That's why social media and all these things are horrible. You can't judge yourself off of the so-called competition that we have made up in our mind. The things that, how people look, how people act, how smart someone is. This is a race that you run completely alone. When you really sit back at your life and you're in that dark room, and you're looking at where you started from, and you tell yourself, how are you gonna feel, man, when you accomplish this goal coming from that shit? Coming from the fucking hell you came from. A lot of you are trying to find inspiration and motivation with a depressed mindset. You're depressed because you're not doing shit with yourself. You don't find inspiration by not living in the grip of life. You need to live in the grip of life to find inspiration. Put challenges in front of yourself. When you put a challenge in front of yourself and you attack it, that's when you find inspiration. The more you walk away from accountability, the weaker you become. One thing about life is that people in life, they are the ultimate puppet masters. They exploit your weakness and they love to walk you around life and own space in your head. One of the biggest ways to cut those strings and walk on your own two fucking feet to your own destination in life is to build self-respect, self-esteem, self-discipline, all those things. Stay hard is not just about going to the fucking gym. Stay hard is about going that extra step in the fucking camp. That's what builds self-esteem and self-respect. There's a lot of scars we have on our bodies that people can see and they tell a story. But a lot of us have scars in our brains about fucked up lives, bad childhoods, bad adulthood, whatever the fuck you're going through. Those scars in your brain we don't talk about. We hide. Scarring is proof that our past is real. But the one thing we do is we allowed to control our lives and we get off the log. Well, it's time to get back on the log and not have those scars define the rest of your fucking life. Sometimes you gotta fight pain with pain. Stay hard. It's so easy to be great nowadays. Most people are, are weak. This, this is a softened generation. So if you have any mental toughness, any, any ability, if you have any fraction of self-discipline, the ability to not want to do it, but still do it. It wasn't until I changed that mentality that I became somebody. That's life, man. But if you can get through to doing things that you hate to do, on the other side is greatness. calling to say I... Not giving civilized is about having a savage mentality. If the worst thing that could ever happen to any human being is they become civilized. Okay. It's that total accountability, like even when you retire, there's a motherfucker looking at me and judging me right now, man. I'm, I was the baddest person to ever live. It doesn't go away, man. You gotta wake up, even though you retired, you never retire. You're setting the example every single day of your life. And being civilized feels so good. I'm sorry, man. Once you get to the top,
You may retire, but you ain't never coming back home, man. Because now you're judged. People see you falling off. You want to be that guy who knows I may be retired from the sport or forever I did, but I'll be damned if you ever see me looking like shit, feeling like shit, not arriving. You're always setting the example. Civilization feels so good. These comfortable feelings are what people want. They want retirement. They want that. They need that. The only way to keep from getting rusty is to constantly owe that motherfucking machine. The machine exists. You got to keep challenging every day. Or so many people die, live a hundred years, never fucking know who they are. Never know who they are. You have to look in that mirror and know this, there's so much more in here, man. So what's your fucking excuse? Maybe that shit's in your fucking head. Maybe that's your excuse for not being better. Life's a real big fucking picture. When I was young, all those things got my head black, fucking not smart enough, single mom, all that bullshit, own space in my head. If you're allowing people and things and situations to own space in your fucking head, you're losing. Last thing, life's one big fucking head game. You play with yourself. If you lose, it's because you allow life to get in your fucking head. Stay hard. When I made the decision, the conscious decision to become a warrior, I realized that my, that my mentality had to be very different. And what that meant was I had to put myself through a bunch of crucibles to gain the warrior mentality. Some guys are born with it, I believe that. Some guys are born because they have some great childhood and their dad's tough on them and they build this mental toughness and this discipline in this kid. I didn't have this, so I had to design a crucible to put myself through to gain this warrior mentality. I chose this world to be a warrior. And I, would, and I would choose it again if I came back to this world. But the mentality of a warrior is very different from the normal mentality. You must be that person on that door, open, get ready to open it, thinking to yourself, if I die, so be it. The only way you can go in that door is knowing there's a great chance you're gonna die. Like being a SEAL, you train with live ammo. You jump out of an airplane, every, 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 everything you do, you could die. So to be a warrior, why people don't understand me, I'm glad you don't understand me. Merry Christmas, good on you. Because being a warrior takes a whole different mindset. A whole different mindset to know that there's a great chance I may not be in the military, like I was in for 21 years. I'm lucky. I'm very lucky that I'm alive, able to talk to you, able to still run. But when you sign up on that dial line to be a set, like a SEAL, your mentality changes. I may not live. You gotta accept that. That's the mentality you have. And that's what makes you a warrior. If you're scared to die, you're a bad warrior. I wasn't born this motherfucker. I made him. At the bottom of insecurities, fear, self-doubt, lies, was me buried in the fucking fetal position. How I got out of that was recognizing it, being honest with it, being truthful with it. And then fixing it. Warriors. Real warriors. And I want to say that is a whole different mentality. So I've worked with people who have the courage to jump on grenades and kill themselves to save everybody around them. That's the kind of mentality it takes to be a SEAL. Does every Navy SEAL have it? No. But that's what SEALs are... That's what we try to, that's why Navy SEAL training buds is so hard. We're trying to find that person who's willing to go the distance. And the distance is your life. So when I'm talking to people right now, maybe what I say to you does not resonate because why you're not willing to give your life for something. Every SEAL, at least most, I can't speak for everyone, most of us are. 
A lot of people who go fight for this country, a lot of them are not willing to do that. Am I talking bad about them? No, don't take it and twist my words. People like to twist words. I thank you for your sacrifice. I thank you for that. A lot of people are scared. Navy SEALs are scared also, but a lot of us have a way to realize what we have decided to do with our lives. And it takes a great sacrifice. That sacrifice could be your life. And that you have to be able to do that to become a warrior. If you go into combat scared, you can be scared, but you can't be so scared it makes you afraid to fight. That makes sense. We're able to control that, and a lot of us are able to put ourselves in hell and become the devil. But at the end of the day, the worst thing that can happen to a man is he becomes civilized. Once you become so civilized that you have everything you want, that warrior mentality that I'm so proud of, that I had to, it wasn't, I, didn't, I wasn't born with it. I had to go through the crucible of my life to acquire it. You always want to keep that thing sharp like a sword. So you always, sharp, you don't have to sharpen it every day like you did when you were going to combat. But if you leave it alone for too long, it gets a little dull. And that's my mind. I always want to sharpen. I don't have to do these things every single day of my life. But you always got to go back and sharpen that sword every now and then to make sure that that mentality is still there and the refrigerator is still empty. Because you always want to keep that edge. And that edge is what keeps you going forward. I'm constantly changing the way I think. The core of who I am? I'll never change that. I'm proud of that. Warrior Spartan mentality. A lot of us are going through a hard time in life. Some people have been bullied. Some people are distressed out. Some people are insecure. Some people are fat and overweight. And the world puts a lot of in your mind. It's not just you. Yeah, you help it. And my whole thing is about, I had to develop a mindset a mindset that was indestructible. I had to armor plate my mind. The mind has the tactical advantage over you at all times. At all times of your life, the mind has a tactical advantage over you. Why is that? It knows what you're afraid of. It knows your insecurities. It knows your deep, dark lies. And it starts to push you away from that shit. It pushes you in a direction that is comfortable. The mind controls everything. It starts telling you all these things. You start to believe it because the mind controls all. This is the time where you have to gain control back of your mind. You have to first be uncomfortable with how you feel about yourself. With that voice that a lot of us like to run away from, we all have it. Life made you this way. We can't live like this. We can't live in fear. We can't live in judgment. We can't be afraid of what the fuck people right now are looking at me saying about me. I worked myself so hard that I turned a person this fucked up into this motherfucker right here. Not off of reading a fucking book off a theorist, off of going to work on myself and saying, I don't know how to do this, but I know that to get over there to that fucking side, I gotta grind myself into a fucking fine powder. And I did it. The most important conversation you will ever have in your fucking life is the one you have with yourself. You wake up with it, you walk around with it, you go to bed with it, eventually you're going to act on it. Whether you're good or bad, it's about you. It is about you. It's strictly about you finding who you are. So many people die, live a hundred years, never fucking know who they are. Never know who they are. You have to look in that mirror and know it's, there's so much more in here, man. Because I can literally right now be a 300 pound guy spraying for cockroaches still to this day. If I did not look in that mirror and say, there, there has to be more to this. This can't be it. And then we're willing to go into it, dive deep into it and give all I have to find it. You realize we're all fucked up. Stop judging yourself against other fucked up people who have hidden it better than you. It's all they've done. They've masked their shit better than you have, and now they're flipping it back on you and saying you're fucked up. I want you to realize that this world, 
life is one big head game. And once you learn to play the motherfucking head game, it's no longer a game anymore at all. You can start living your life.